Hey, what's up? This is um, an eFix demo demonstrating the eFix um, Hackintosh chip, if you would call it that, allowing you to load Mac OS X on pretty much a PC, only you have to be specific in the hardware that you use. Let's go ahead and do a quick review. This is my packing slip for the hardware that I got from Newegg.com. Um, I got the Gigabyte board. 2600 ATI, Coolmax 1200 power supply, Intel quad core, 4 gigs of RAM, I got two 4 gig packs, Western Digital 500 gigabyte hard drive that happened to come DOA, so I went and I got a terabyte from Best Buy of all places, then I have a 20x DVD R drive, and if we look at the subtotal for all this, it's a whopping eight hundred and twenty seven dollars which isn't that much if you think about it considering what kind of computer that you're getting a quad core Mac Pro essentially so let's go ahead and do some more hardware review MX Revolution G15 keyboard even though I have the slim keyboard in my car I just haven't brought it up because I'm lazy 20 inch Dell let's go ahead oh iPhone 3G not that it matters OS X retail, yes I did buy it. And there's my Hackintosh. It's an old PC that I have because I build computers on a regular basis. It's a PC, I think 65 Lian lie case. Used to be top notch, now it's so so. Let's go ahead and get a quick view. This is the Gigabyte board. As you can see, front side bus 1200. Even though I do not have 1200 RAM in there, I only have 800 because that's all that OSX is going to recognize anyway. There's the 2600 um, graphics card. It's got a big heat sink, no fan. I didn't want to really get into it too much. And there's the eFix chip plugged directly into the motherboard. I could have plugged it in off the extension cable that is provided. They also provide a little handy 3M double-sided sticky tape, but I didn't feel the need to. Um, I don't have this thing running in Crossfire because I just, I don't know, I don't need to. There's the quad core, as anybody can see. And there's the hard drive. It's, trust me, it's a terabyte. I really don't know where it says terabyte on there, but it does somewhere in there. All right, regardless to that, it's really a Hackintosh. So let's go ahead and do an initial power up and see how fast this thing starts. Boom, we've got power. And let's see the screen start up. There's a video card, means it's good. Boom, there's the BIOS. Go ahead and turn that off. As you can see, this little indicator right here means that the eFix chip is running the way that it should. And we should see, bam, there you go. In the beginning, you have multiple choices, DVD and the hard drive. I've only got one hard drive on there, and it is an OSX drive. So it sees that as the default. And as you can see, there's the indicator showing that it's loading. And let's go ahead and back away. It should happen pretty quick. And here we come. And there we go. And there she goes. Why the sound didn't come on is beyond me. It works. I don't know if I have it muted or what's going on. Oh, yeah, of course I have it all the way down. All right, yeah, the sound works. Everything works. There's no need to install any kind of crazy drivers or anything like that. Um, I've got pretty much everything that I need. Um, full suite. There's Office. Let's go ahead and back it up. I'm sorry if the camera angle is kind of bad. I'm just one guy holding this thing like every other nerd. Um, Mac OS X software. Go ahead and zoom in on that real quick. Make sure you can get a good shot. Let's go ahead and do about this Mac. And it's 10.5.5. I've already done the updates. It's a 2.4 gigahertz processor, 8 gigabytes of RAM. Let's go ahead and do a software update. 
make sure that we're up to date. Check it for new software. It's looking, it's looking, it's looking. And I'm up to date. I'll go ahead and quit out of that. And I think that's pretty much it. Oh, let me prove that. Well, well, you know that it works. Let me just go ahead and load Safari. And there she is. And that's pretty much it. Um, as you can see, the eFix chip works really well. I had no problems um, booting the system initially, putting OSX on there. Everything recognized it. It had no hardware conflicts at all. No crazy drivers to load. Everything loaded automatically. I had nothing else to do, really. And that's pretty much about it. Um, and I hope this video helps you because I know videos of stuff actually working actually help me whenever I make purchasing decisions. Considering that, okay, let's just put this into a tally right here. Let's see. $827 hardware. All right, that's how much my initial cost was considering that I had a hard drive hardware failure or dead on arrival. But that's how much it would have cost me initially. Um, OSX, that's another 130 plus uh, 165 for the chip. So what is that? 295, let's just round it to 300. 300 plus that, you know, what is that? 1127, something like that. For a quad core processing Mac Pro with 500 gigabytes of RAM, eight gigs of memory and 256 um, memory video. So I guess that's pretty much about it. It's a great solution if you want to have a Mac, only you don't want to drop three grand on a Mac Pro. And you know, you could also double it up as a PC because it's not a bad PC. All right, well, I hope this helps y'all. And I don't know, leave me a comment. Let me know how lame my video is. Probably pretty lame, but hey, first time, right? Okay, cool. I hope y'all have a great day, evening, or afternoon.